exercise 511 and this will bring us to learning objective 4 learning objective 5 and learning objective 7 so let's see what we have here 511 applying uh, overhead in a service company and journal entries all right local landscaping uses a job order costing system to track the cost of its landscaping projects the company provides complete garden design and landscaping services the following table provides data concerning the three landscaping projects that were in process during May. There was no work in process at the beginning of May. So we make no adjustment for a beginning balance. Beautiful. So there's our three projects. If you're looking at page 188, you can see it right there. Let's continue reading. Actual overhead costs uh, were $16,000 for May. Overhead costs are applied to projects on the basis of designer hours since most of the overhead is related to the costs of the Garden Design Studio. The predetermined overhead rate is $45 per designer hour. So we know what our predetermined overhead rate is. It's $45 per designer hour. Notice that's not direct labor hours. Per designer hour. Just that we're clear. $45. The Williams and Chandler projects were completed in May. The Nguyen project, I think I'm saying that right, uh, was not completed by the end of the month. No other jobs were in process during May. So at the end of May, there's only one project left in work in process. Williams and Chandler are done and gone. Number one required, compute the amount of overhead costs that would have been charged to each project during May. All right, well, that's simple enough. Let's start with question number one, and let's write our project names down. Williams, Chandler, and as I write this one down, you'll see why I think I said it right, N-G-U-Y-E-N. -E I'm not quite sure how to, I think that's a N or a G, I'm not sure. Anyways, there we go. So, what we need here is the designer hours. We have... 200 designer hours here, we have 80 here, and we have 120 here. So, if we need our applied manufacturing overhead, it's 200 times our $45. So this one will be charged with $9,000. This one will be charged with $3,600. And this one will be charged with 5400 Now all I'm doing is I'm just multiplying the designer hours by the predetermined overhead rate because our predetermined is $45 per designer hour. We have 280 and 120 hours, so it's just multiplication. If I add these three together, I'm not being asked to, I'm just going to do it now just to see our total that was applied. I get 18,000. So we know we, we applied in total $18,000. There's number one done. Number two, prepare a journal entry showing the completion of the Williams and Chandler projects and the transfer of costs to completed projects. So we need to have a total cost for Williams and a total cost for Chandler to do the journal entry. So what we want to do is for number two, let's just continue on with this little thing that we have here. And let's write direct materials. And we're told direct materials here was 4,800. Direct materials here was 1,800, and here was 3,600, and we'll record direct labor, 2,400, 1,000, and 1,500. So now we can add them up, and we're adding these numbers for each project. So this will amount to 16,200, this amounts to 6,400. And this amounts to 10,500. And we're told in the question that the Williams and Chandler projects were transferred to completed projects, or what's called the finished goods inventory. And it's no longer in work in process. So we have to take it out of work in process and transfer it. Because remember, when anything leaves work in process, where does it go? Finished goods inventory. On this, uh, on, on this particular uh, business, it's called uh, completed projects, but we'll still call it finished goods inventory uh, for the uh, sake of the journal entry. So what's our journal entry look like? If it's leaving work in process and going into finished goods, finished goods increases by the amount 
of, of what's going in. Since Williams and Chandler are both leaving, we add these two together, we get 22,600, and that means work in process is reduced by 22,600. There's our journal entry. Nice and simple, right? <clears throat> What's the uh, third thing that is required? What is the balance in the work in process account at the end of the month? Well, we've pretty much already solved three by solving this, haven't we? Number three, if these two are gone, look what's left. So the balance is 10,500. So finally, we can answer question number four. And question number four says, what is the balance in the overhead account at the end of the month? What is this balance called? Well, we're told in the problem that our actual manufacturing overhead that we incurred for the month was $16,000. We applied, and remember when we figured out how much manufacturing we, we applied to each job, I just added them across to see what our total was. So we already know that. We applied $18,000. So if we incurred 16000 and let's do it in a T account just so that we can see what it looks like. Here's our manufacturing overhead. Our actual costs get recorded here. Our applied amounts get recorded on the credit side. So what is left after all this is done? We have a $2,000 credit. And what is this amount called? If we only incurred sixteen, but we charged eighteen, we charged too much. We over applied. So this $2,000 credit balance is called over applied manufacturing overhead. That is 511. Exercise 512. Learning objective 3. Learning objective 5. What have we got here? Varying predetermined overhead rates. Jakarta Company uses a composting or makes a composting bin that is subject to wide seasonal variations in demand. Unit product costs are computed on a quarterly basis by dividing each quarter's manufacturing costs, material labor, and overhead by the quarter's production in units. The company's estimated costs by quarter for the coming year are as follows first, second, third, fourth, and we can see. At the very bottom, estimated unit product costs. So what they're saying here is in the first quarter, it costs $7.05 to make one of these. In the second quarter, it costs $9.30. In the third quarter, it costs $13.80, and then it drops to $7.80 in the fourth quarter. We can see how difficult it would be to make decisions in a business like this. If we took those costs to be real, and nothing we could do about it, any manager would say, look, it's not worth making anything in the third quarter because it costs us $13.80. Let's make more in the first quarter and lay people off in the third quarter. Well, that would just be silly, wouldn't it? Because there may be fixed costs in the third quarter that all happen in the third quarter that are meant to support operations for the entire year, thereby misleading us into thinking that it's just simply a high-cost quarter, right? Now, the other thing that you may notice, too, is that it makes a composting bin. It makes one product over and over and over and over again, multiple units of the same product. So that this probably doesn't make sense to use job costing on this one because this is process costing. It only makes one thing. However, we'll continue on with the fact that it's probably job costing and go with that. How's that sound? Management finds the variation in unit product cost to be confusing and difficult to work with. It has been suggested that the problem lies with manufacturing overhead since it is the largest element of cost. Accordingly, you have been asked to find a more appropriate way of assigning manufacturing overhead cost to units of product. After some analysis, you have determined that the company's overhead costs are mostly fixed and therefore show little sensitivity to changes in the level of production. So if they show no sensitivity or little sensitivity to the level of changes in production, we're not going to use units. We're not going to use units. It makes no sense, right? So what we need is we need some basis on which to, to figure out what a manufacturing overhead rate would be. So we're going to need estimates to figure out a predetermined overhead rate. We need estimates for our manufacturing overhead and for some activity driver. 
Now the numbers that were given for first, second, and third, first, second, third, and fourth quarter are estimates. It's a budget for the year. So to figure out what our estimated manufacturing overhead costs are, we just have to add across 228 plus 204 plus 192 plus 216. We will get to $840,000 in manufacturing overhead. That's the easy part of this question. The next part is, what do we use? Well, there's only two other things that we can use. We know we're not going to use units because it says it has little variation with units. We can use direct materials, but that doesn't make any sense because direct materials will vary directly with the number of units. And if the number of units has no relationship to fixed costs, we can ignore that. So the only thing left is direct labor. But we're not given hours of direct labor. We're just given direct labor dollars. So we're going to go ahead and use the only thing that we can use, direct labor dollars. And if we add up all the direct labor dollars that we encounter, we come to $240,000. So we know that our predetermined overhead rate is manufacturing overhead, estimated, divided by estimated direct labor dollars, gives us 3.5. Remember now, the dollar signs cancel out on these. So that's 3.5 or 350%. What does this mean? This means that we are going to incur $3.50 in manufacturing overhead for every one dollar in labor costs. This is a multiple, not a dollar rate, right? Equals 3.5. So there we go. We've, uh, we've solved the first one required. The company uses job order costing. How would you recommend that manufacturing overhead costs be assigned to production? Be specific, show all computations. We have been specific and we have shown all computations. Let's move on to the second part of this question, number two. Recompute the company's unit product costs in accordance with your recommendation in one above. So to do this, we have to rewrite what we already have, quarter one, two, three, and four. So let's start with our direct materials. That won't change. We'll still just copy what we have in the budget. 240, 120, 60, and 180. Then we have our direct labor, and that will stay the same because nothing changes there. So 96, 48, 24, and 72. Now we're going to do our manufacturing overhead and it's a multiple of 3.5 per direct labor dollar. So if we have 96,000 here, we multiply 96 by 3.5, we end up with 336,000. Same thing here, multiply this by 3.5, you'll get 168. Same thing here, 84 and 252. So we can total these up. These are our total manufacturing costs. And I'm going to change color so that we know what we're doing here. This is 672. This will be 336. And we have 168. And finally 504. So those are our total manufacturing costs. So we divided by number of units, because we need our unit cost, right? Number of units. We made 80,000 units here. We dropped down to 40,000 units here, 20,000 here, and 60,000. And this will give us our cost per unit. This is just division. 672 divided by 80 will give us $8.40. 336 divided by 40 will give us $8.40. And you'll find that you'll get the same thing. If you're getting the same number in every quarter, you have done it right. That is the purpose of using an applied overhead, is so that you can get a constant cost per unit. So in other words, even though in the previous example, third quarter was very high in costs, well, those costs incurred in the third quarter actually were spread out, were meant to support the entire year. So this $8.40 is a more realistic cost per unit 
no matter what time of year that you make it so that you can make better manufacturing decisions this way.